Welcome back. Cogar Center in Columbia is known for performing arts, but did you know you can go there and see visual art too? Director Nate Terracio and many others have worked so hard to create a well-rounded cultural experience for all guests by adding unique artwork. So Nate, tell us about the different collections that people can go see anytime. Sure, at the Cogar Center for the Arts, very much arts and not performing arts, we've had a commitment to uh, all of the arts and supporting all of the arts here in the Midlands. Uh, we have a permanent collection of artwork that's been up on the walls since 1990. Uh, so when guests come, they can always see these really world-class works of art. But we also have two galleries on the second floor. The Nook is something that we've been working with Jasper Magazine on. We have a rotating monthly uh, collection of artists that come in and show their works for the month. And then we have the Upstairs Gallery, which is a bigger space on the second floor where we host four to six uh, different gallery pieces every year. So we're really committed to showing not only national artists, but regional artists and local visual artists. So when people come to see the performing arts, they can also see visual art at the same time. That's something that I love about Cogar Center is the variety like we've been talking about. When you go in for a show, you might not be expecting to see a painting or stumble upon a new artist that you didn't know about. And it's just so exciting. So let's hear from some of those local artists. My name is Philip Mullen. I'm an artist. I was a professor at USC from uh, 1969 to 2000. And I was an artist with David Finley Galleries in New York from uh, 1975 to 2010. In um, 1990, the Coger Center had been built and there'd been a determination at that time not to put artwork up in it. And I think that was primarily based on not wanting to go to the trouble of having to deal with local artists and everybody wanting to show there and the constant hanging and not hanging and stuff like that. Then Dot Ryle, who is a great promoter of the arts in Columbia, came up with the idea of putting up a show of mine in here. And she went to uh, then president of the university, James Holderman and presented the idea. Fortunately, he was already a fan of my work and had bought a couple of them for the university at that point. One of the reasons that these have worked well in the Coger Center is because my tendency has to been, been in my career to work large. My sort of normal size, which you see here, is six feet by four foot four. And of the pieces they own, that's, that are here, that's the smallest up. That, this has actually been a wonderful opportunity for me because, um, you know, I came to the university in 69. I taught here for six years and then I uh, took a year's leave and I moved to New York. But this kept a ground base for my exposure in Columbia where I live. I think it's also been a great deal for the Coger Center though because it's very hard to find this volume of paintings in this scale. I mean, you, you know, you see these paintings here and I've, he I've heard people describe paintings this size here as being like about three by four feet. You know, but it's because it's in this big space. So it's been a really mutually beneficial situation. You know, I think some people, some people come and, and they don't notice them. Other people come and they um, will contact me and say, really been great to have them here. This is amazing to have an art center with not only original art, but high quality art up like this. So I, I think the impact's quite different according to how people uh, respond to it. This is um, a project that was a result of an emerging artist grant from the South Carolina Arts Commission. Um, I'm one of six people this year to receive a grant. Stories of loss, stories of um, faith, stories of spirituality, um, memories of childhood, the influences that made me the person that I am. Coming back to a profession that I love or um, and stayed away from for about 30 years to experience other things. So that's what you see behind me. I cannot explain how 
how it feels, it's either providential or serendipity because everything kind of came together. It was again the, the South Carolina Arts Commission emerging grant and the opportunity to do this show that's titled Love Heals the Margins and Time in Between. I was one of those persons who was told can't make money at art so I decided that I would go into public relations and taught uh, public relations on a college level for about 30 years and decided I can't separate the storytelling aspect of what I do from the art. You know, the words and images had to be wed. I would describe my style as a montage of memories and events that have happened in my life. Um, I would say that what I paint are definitely memories and they're collaborative storytelling uh, paintings. So I talk with family members and people that have had some relationship with me and I try to use those paintings to talk about the experiences that we've all had and what we have in common. It was just unbelievable to think that even at this stage in my life that I would be an emerging artist <laughs> or that I would be at the Coger Center. I would say to other emerging artists, keep doing it. Uh, and I think that telling the stories of your life and your lifetime are extremely important. I think they include, as I said, generations before you and generations after you. So keep telling the stories, keep doing it because otherwise they are going to be forgotten and lost.